Jensen provided some very optimistic claims at CES this year. Is the RTX 50 series of GPUs double the performance from last gen? And is a 5070 really going to provide the performance of a 4090? Let's get into it. At CES, Jensen spoke to thousands inside the arena at Mandalay Bay and announced the RTX 50 series of GPUs that will be released in January and February. Let's start with the pricing because even though there has been countless tweets, posts, shorts, and videos talking about how the prices for this generation was going to be insane, the only GPU to receive a price hike is the 5090. The 5090 price is $1,999. And we saw NVIDIA use that price before when they introduced the RTX 3090 Ti back in 2022. The sales of the 4090 were routinely selling above its MSRP of $1599, so this really was not a surprise. Everyone knew the price was going to increase on the 5090, the only question was, by how much? The Founders Edition of this GPU itself looks rather impressive in that the board itself looks to be ITX size and makes up about one-third of the GPU, while the cooling fins and fans make up the other two-thirds. What is also impressive is the 575 watt total graphics power on such a small board. The heat generation capability in such a small area will provide a challenge for not only cooling the card, but then also the amount of heat that will be dumped inside the PC case. I'm not sure I understand how this works without a custom water loop. The RTX 5080 keeps the same price of $999 that was introduced with the 4080 Super last year. And the 5070 Ti receives a price cut of $50 and is now $749. Finally, the 5070 keeps the 4070's $549 price tag that it had for most of its life. Now some people will say that this is a price cut since the RTX 4070 launched in April of 2023 for $599. But nobody bought that card at that price. It wasn't until the price cut just five months later in September did sales start to improve. Out of the 20 months that the 4070 was in production, we saw 15 months where it was 549. So one price increase, one price decrease, and two stay the same. Not a lot of drama here. Seems a rather bit of status quo on pricing. So what about the performance? Now Jensen made a bold claim. Now with the Blackwell family, RTX 5070, 4090 performance at 549. However, it was more interesting with what he said after that. Impossible without artificial intelligence. Impossible without artificial intelligence. That is a key statement, and we'll get to that in a moment. He also said, 5090, twice the performance of a 4090. A 5090 is twice the performance of a 4090. And that was it. Of the 90 minute presentation, only five minutes were used for discussing the RTX 50 series Blackwell architecture. No charts were shown, no other performance claims. The rest of the presentation focused on selling AI to his shareholders. And based on Nvidia stock price the next day, I guess the investors didn't think too much of his presentation. To get details on Jensen's claims, you needed to go over to their website to see what was posted, and here we find the magical 2x the performance claims. And we see it across the board. The 5090 is double the 4090, the 5080 is 2x the 4080, and on and on to the 5070 is double the 4070. But let's check that last claim. And if you go over to Tech Power Up and look up what is double a 4070, you see that it is indeed a 4090. However, the claim only holds for a couple of scenarios. Looking back at that chart, it's double in Cyberpunk, Alan Wake 2, and Black Myth Wukong. It's not double in A Plague Tale Requiem or Far Cry 6. And if you look closer, it's only double with DLSS 4. Remember what Jensen said? Impossible without artificial intelligence. And DLSS 4 is the new feature that brings multi-frame generation that is only possible with artificial intelligence. DLSS 3 brought us one frame being generated between two what I will call real frames, but now you have up to three frames being generated. So if you look at the example given, which was in Cyberpunk, where a 5090 is struggling to provide an unplayable 28 FPS at native 4K resolution with ray tracing on, 
Suddenly, with the new AI multi-frame generation, you have 242 FPS. 28 FPS to 242 FPS. Looking at this in the footnotes, you see on the left side at 28 frames per second is rendering at native 4K on a 5090 with ray tracing overdrive and max settings. The one on the right is showing super resolution mode, which means it's rendering the image at 1080p and upscaling it to 4K. Also, the multi-frame generation mode is 4X, so you're getting one real frame and then three fake frames being generated. Three-fourths of the frames are generated. So the actual real frame rate of the 5090 is more like 60 FPS at 1080p, ray tracing overdrive, and max settings. Now that doesn't sound as impressive as 242 FPS. There is a danger in NVIDIA showing these high frame rates because it is misleading to the uninformed. And NVIDIA is letting the uninformed run with those numbers to claim superior performance for their GPUs. You have to think about why we want higher frame rates in the first place. Why did we want to go from 30 FPS to 60 FPS? Why did we want to go from 60 FPS to 100, then 120? We wanted the increase in frame rates because it reduced the input latency, the time it takes you to move your mouse to when you see the change on the screen. We have come to understand over the years that higher FPS equals lower input latency. Frame generation breaks that well-known relationship. Frame generation technology does not reduce input latency. However, frame generation can fool the uninformed to think they're getting higher frame rates. So I want to caution you that when you see other reviewers who quote frame rates with frame generation on, that those reviewers have either lost the plot or never understood it in the first place. And I'm not knocking frame generation technology. It's a good frame rate smoothing technology and it works well in specific situations. But if frame generation is going to become standard in the future, then we really need to throw out the generated FPS number and come up with an input latency metric and have that reported in the reviews. Getting back to the charts, there is only one game shown without DLSS and that is Far Cry 6. As in the past, I did my pixel counting best to determine the performance improvement over last generation. The 5090 at 4K is 28% faster than a 4090. The 5080 is 33% faster than the 4080. Now at 1440p, the 5070 Ti is 33% faster than a 4070 Ti. And again at 1440p, the 5070 is 31% faster than the 4070. Because this is with ray tracing on, we really don't know the true rasterization only performance improvement yet. I was hoping for a time spy leak, but so far none. All we can say is that with the ray tracing improvements along with the architectural improvements, which includes faster GDDR7 memory, you get a combined about 30% improvement this generation. Outside of the 5090, the pricing this generation is not higher, and my sense is that the pricing is not higher for a reason. And that is because the actual rasterization performance improvement will not be that great. Keep in mind that they are on the same 4 nanometer node as last generation, and we don't see a massive clock frequency bump, and excluding the 5090, we only see a modest increase in the number of shaders. And because the 4 nanometer node is now mature, it's not as expensive as it was two years ago, so Nvidia can still get good profit margins off these cards. I expect the 5070 series will provide a very modest uplift in rasterization performance, improve ray tracing, but the true selling feature for Blackwell is AI and the new features it provides in DLSS 4. Unless you need those new features, if you purchased a 40 series GPU, then this is a skip it generation. And for Nvidia, that will be good enough. Unlike last generation, I have watched over the past few weeks the supply of RTX 4070 and up GPUs just dry up. You don't see them at Newegg or Micro Center. So these new RTX 50 series GPUs will fill up the shelves and your only choice for a new GPU will be whatever AMD decides to release. <sighs> AMD, another massive disappointment. At CES this year, they decided to not present RDNA 4 in the keynote. What is very frustrating is that the AIB partners have their GPUs ready to go and ready to show them off to the world. Now they really can't even talk about them. 
the AIVs must be so frustrated with AMD and I'm sure have even lost even more confidence in them. I wonder how many more AIVs will follow MSI and just give up on making AMD GPUs. AMD is not going to disrupt the market with their GPUs this generation. It is clear they're going to follow the pricing structure that Nvidia sets and then slot right in like they have done in the past few generations. And that strategy will likely to continue to get them the same results that they have been getting, even less market share than they have now. I've talked about this many times before, so you can watch my previous videos if you want the history. I don't care what AMD says anymore. I only care what they do. And their behavior shows clearly they are going to continue to follow NVIDIA. I'll have more to say about AMD and RDNA 4 when they decide to release specs, pricing, and have a release date. Like it if you learned something, share it, consider subscribing for more analysis. Thank you all so very much for watching. Stay safe, and I will see you in the next one.